All right, guys, uh, just a quick brain dump video of the things that I found helpful the first couple times that I went elk hunting. Uh, just thought I'd share some stuff. Maybe you know this stuff, maybe you don't, um, but hopefully it's somewhat helpful. So the first thing that I learned was you're probably going to have an encounter only 100 to 200 yards from the peak. Uh, or from the ridge um, with the elk. So however long this is from that mark down doesn't matter. You just got to get up near the top of the hill. Um, preferably, you know, if this is tree line, we'll call this tree line. Kind of through here. Those are ugly trees. Um, they're probably building wallows up near the top here, top of the tree line. Now wallows are easy to identify because they're all going to be tore up. These are big animals uh, with big hooves that they beat up earth when a whole herd comes through. So you'll notice that it's all tore up and it's going to stink. It smells like a barn uh, in these wallows. So smell is actually probably one of your, the first things you're going to notice. And that's kind of not how you know that you're getting in there. Um, with these animals, it's important to remember that they're not deer, even though they look like deer and we're used to hunting deer, they don't behave like deer. Um, they're closer to like a cross between deer and cows because they are a herd animal. Um, they want to stay with the herd as much as possible. Um, so with that in mind, these mountains, obviously they have peaks and if you're looking at a ridge, like if the ridges will have peaks and then they'll have saddles, right? The saddle being this low part. Um, these elk are like any other animal where they want to uh, follow the path of least resistance. And so when they are making trails, they're not, they're not going to the peaks, they're going to go to the saddles. So when you're looking for elk trails, it's way more likely that you're going to find a trail in a saddle than in a peak. And if there's a little tree in a saddle, it'll probably be on one side or the other of the tree because when they're following, they can feel like they have a little bit of cover when they get up near the top. With these herds, um, you might think that the bull is like the big boss in the herd, but you'd be wrong because there's what's called the herd cow and she's the one who's in charge of the whole herd. Um, so as far as elk behavior, if there's a herd on the other side of a ridge from you, you'll probably hear them. The cows will be kind of mewing. Um, bulls may or may not call, but the cows all kind of just talk to each other. And again, they're massive, so you'll hear them walking. Um, where I hunted before was pretty gravelly, so um, you could hear like the gravel crunching under the hooves. So what'll happen is the cow, the herd cow, she'll like poke her little head up over the top, and she'll just hang out. She's scouting whether it's okay to come over this saddle or not. And she'll hang out for minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, until she decides that it's safe, then she might come down and follow the trail over. Right behind the herd cow will come all the rest of the cows and like the, the calves, and then the bulls are at the very end. I saw this firsthand. Uh, the, cow, the herd cow will come up to the top and then sh like she'll spend minutes. Um, she's really wary. You definitely don't want to shoot her. She's probably the oldest cow in the herd. She's going to be super tough to eat, like not worth shooting. Um, but what's nice is that once she comes over and she starts um, trotting down the trail, the ones that come behind her are just stupid. They, they just look at the ass of the cow right ahead of them. So you can, once the herd cow is passed, you can kind of sneak in closer if you think you need to get in closer for a better shot. Um, just as long as you stay undercover and you stay out of the, you know, watch the direction of the wind. 
Um, so you can set up closer to the trail with the hope that there's a bull on the tail end and the bull's gonna come in and uh, you'll have a better shot at the bull. Um, when looking for elk, like glassing from the road, you know, you might be, you know, if your truck's down here, this is a truck, and you're looking way up at the top, and this is, whatever, several thousand feet from here to here. Say 2,000 feet. Like, even huge elk are going to be super tiny, and the, th the weird thing is they blend in super good. Even though elk are dark brown and the, the hills are, like, gray and, and green and, and um, like, really light sage green and that sort of stuff, the elk really blend in, even on a bald top, except for their butts. So instead of looking for whole elk when you're glassing up, just look for little white spots, because that's all they're going to look like, is the elk butts are little white spots. When you f see the butts, all of a sudden, they'll just like pop off the hill, and you'll notice like a bunch of them all together. But until you notice that first elk butt, it's, it's hard to see them. Um, so, yeah, rather than spend your time looking, trying to look for these big brown elk, the little white spots is really the most helpful thing. Um, for now, that's all I got. Uh, I'll make more of these uh, short little videos as I think of them. And if you guys have any questions about this sort of stuff, just send me a text or whatever, and I will uh, help out as necessary. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.